Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about what happens when you have to go on an unexpected outdoor adventure. Alright guys, we're in some weird times right now. There's a little bit of panic going around over some virus. The world is kind of in this weird state and you don't know what's going to happen next exactly. So over the years I've practiced a little bit of prepping and I want to talk to you guys about a bug out bag today to help you guys kind of be prepared. What a bug out bag is, is a bag of stuff that you'd bring into the woods to help you survive for a little while. What would cause you to ever need to use this? There's probably a list of a hundred things that would actually cause you to need a bug out bag, but I'm not going to list those things because right now the world's already in this weird panic state. That's not what this channel is about. I'm trying to help some friends and family stay prepared. So. Let's dive into this bug out bag. So just imagine you have only a few minutes to grab this bag and leave your house. What are some things that you would need to go live off the land for a little bit? Well, first thing you would need is some sort of shelter to protect you from the elements. So if you're putting a shelter in your bug out bag, <clears throat> the kind of the goal is to keep the bag light. So you're not going to grab your luxury eight person tent. This bag is not made for luxury. This is how do I survive in the woods for a little bit. <clears throat> so what I have included is this emergency tent. Like I said, not luxurious, but this is going to provide shelter in times of need. Another thing to protect you from the environment would be a poncho. Because if you're out in the woods and uh, searching for stuff, water, food, whatever it is, uh, firewood, you want to make sure you're staying dry. So a poncho is always a good idea. These little guys right here, emergency blankets, you're obviously not going to want to stuff your bag with your fancy comforter from your bed or your pillow top mattress or whatever. But you are going to need to stay warm, you know, if it's that time of year. So some emergency blankets are always a good choice. I always like to include a pair of gloves in my bag for a hundred reasons, you know, but one of them to stay warm, but also, you know, when you're working outside, cutting down trees or whatever it is, you're going to want to keep your hands safe from splinters, etc., etc. Now, in the event that you do get injured in some way, shape, or form, you always want to make sure you have first aid supplies. So right here, I just have a few different bandages, yada yada, band-aids, some alcohol swabs to uh, clean the cut if you were to have one, a little pair of tweezers if you were to get a splinter, something like that. But I would also include in this some, probably some Neosporin or some, some type of first aid cream, probably some um, Tylenol to help break a fever if you were to catch one. All right, we've got shelter and first aid covered. Now let's talk about food and water. First of all, you know, I would keep maybe a little bit of snacks and a little bit of water in your bag, but eventually those things are going to run out. So what do you do next? I highly recommend having a water filtration system to some extent. This is one of those straws. It's good for filtering quite a few gallons of water for over a long period of time. So grabbing one of these for when your water supply runs out, you can go to a stream, river, whatever it is, and get some more water filter through one of these bad boys and I better clean drinking water. As far as food goes, you might have to live off the land for a little while. So, you know, after you run out of your snacks, your granola bars, whatever those easy to access items are that you packed in your pack, you might need to do some hunting or fishing. You know, make some traps for some small game. But what I think is the best idea, if you're close to a water source, is to fish for some food. So now, once again, I had said before, this isn't the time for luxury. You're not going to bring your giant, nice $200, $300 pole with you and go have a heyday out on the river. So what I have here this is very simple. This is just a line with a hook and one little fake worm on it. You'd use this to, you know, catch some panfish or whatnot just long enough to survive. All right, moving on, let's get to fire making supplies. Obviously, you're going to want to stay warm and also have a spot to cook some of that food or boil water also if you needed to. So first I have this little nifty tool. This is basically a pocket chainsaw sometimes what it's called. A pocket saw, uh, a wire saw. Essentially you unravel this bad boy, stretch it out around a tree, and you can saw right through it. Obviously you're not going to use this in your backyard to do a bunch of chores, but if you're out in the woods and you're looking for some dead trees to cut or trim to make some firewood, this is a great tool for that and you don't have to carry a hatchet around. I like waterproof matches, because I can't tell you how many times I'm the guy that's trying to light the lighter and it either got wet or it's out of fluid or something stupid like that, so these waterproof matches are always good. Probably the Probably the most reliable fire-making tool is a ferro rod. It's this guy right here. 
Um, it's waterproof and you can pretty much make a fire anywhere with it. All right, so another thing that I wanna bring up is a headlamp. I like a headlamp because you never know when this thing could happen and when you're gonna have to do any sort of work in the dark. And if you don't have a fire started already, it's gonna be a pain in the butt if you don't have a light source. So I recommend a headlamp because you can be hands-free with it. Otherwise, a small flashlight or something like that works pretty well too. Another honorable mention I have here is a solar charger because you can just hook this thing to your pack and the sun's gonna charge this baby up. Mine actually has a light on it as well, but you can use this to charge any of electronics that you need to communicate with the outside world. Another one on the list, this guy right here is a paracord bracelet. You put it on your wrist, you put it on your ankle. This one has a compass on it, but you never know when you're gonna need some cord to make something when you're out in the wilderness. So that's why I like these guys because they have quite a bit of cord in them. They also have a whistle on them. You can use that to communicate. Here we have one of the tiniest knives in the world. Another thing on the list is a small knife because obviously knives just come in handy for a ton of different things. A little bonus item that I have in my pack is duct tape. I like duct tape because you can use it to make stuff, you can use it to fix stuff, and also it's great for starting fires. Something I don't have on me right now that you might want to think about though is toiletries. And this is your stuff like your toilet paper, toothpaste, things like that that you're going to want to stay clean. So put a little something something in your bag to help you stay safe and clean out there. Another thing I want to have on the list is cash. Like I said, <clears throat> it's weird times. You might run into some people that have some stuff that you need and the only way you might be able to get it is to pay them a little bit of money or something like that. So keep a little bit of cash on you for those extra items that you weren't thinking about or that you ran out of. The last thing that I want to put on this list is guns and ammo. Now I know this doesn't apply to every country, but here in America, we are allowed to have guns and ammo on us. Basically, I'm just saying be prepared. The last thing you want is someone to bully you and take away all these items that you have in your bag. So guns and ammo is always a great way to protect yourself. And also if you could use it for hunting, that's great too. All right, guys, this is a list of stuff that I have in my bug out bag. It's a beginner bag. There's more stuff that could be added to it. If there's something that you think that I really should have in it, please let me know down in the comment section. If you think this bag sucks, let me know down in the comment section. If you think it's a great start, Hit that like button. Let me know down in the comment section. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. Stay prepared. And I'll catch you next time. What about good? Another thing to prepare, you know, your comforter. Your look. I highly recommend having a. As far as food goes, you might have to. Essentially, you unravel this thing, pull it out like this. Probably the, probably the wrong middle. Blah, 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 blah. Another, another. So you could use that to communicate in one shape or another. I like duct duct tape. Blah, blah. So there'd be. Mm.